Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin, and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case of McGuire versus Almy. This case was heard in the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts in the year 1937. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. McGuire was a nurse at the time responsible for watching Almy. Almy was a severely mentally handicapped individual. Physically, she was fine, but she had some severe mental issues. McGuire was tasked with watching her 24 seven. Um, she was responsible for her at all times and she was being paid to watch over her. So McGuire was like her paid caretaker in a sense. Uh, she had been doing so for about 14 months. Um, one night, Almy um, was locked in her room. When McGuire couldn't have direct oversight over Almy, she would just lock her in her room to you know, make sure that she couldn't get out or cause any damage in the common area. Um, <clears throat> one night which, when Almy was locked in her room, uh, McGuire began to hear smashing and yelling from her room. And so she looked in through the window and saw that Almy had begun breaking all of the furniture in her room. And she had begun, uh, you know, just a bout of violence in there, breaking a lot of things up causing a lot of damage to the furniture in the room. Um, McGuire and another nurse at the time were worried that Almy, if she kept this act up, was gonna hurt herself with all the broken pieces of furniture in the room. They felt that they had a need to do something, so they called Almy's brother. And you got Almy's brother down there, and they tried to have him reason with her. Um, ultimately, that couldn't be done. Uh, McGuire felt like she needed to go in and stop Almy, get her out of the room, and try and just stop the situation. <clears throat> when McGuire decided she needed to enter the room, Almy was standing in the middle of the room with a table leg raised above her head. Um, so it was fairly obvious that she was violent uh, and was gonna do some type of violence. Nevertheless, McGuire went in feeling that she had this special relationship with Almy and that she would be able to stop this situation. Well, when she walked in, Almy hit her over the head uh, with the table leg and, and caused some damage. Uh, McGuire brought suit claiming that what Almy did will constituted a battery. So the court had the issue of dealing with whether or not uh, a mentally handicapped individual can be held liable for torts uh, more generally and can be held liable for the tort of battery. So the court ruled in favor of McGuire saying that what Almy did was battery. They said that the court can't take in um, the mental states of the individuals into their ruling. They have to just rule on what happens and what they can see. Uh, for a quote to kind of illustrate that, I'll read out of the case. Uh, the court says, where an insane person by their act does intentional damage to the person or property of another, he is liable for that damage in the same circumstances in which a normal person would be liable. This means insofar as particular intent would be necessary in order to render a normal person liable, the insane person in order to be liable must have been capable of entertaining that same intent and must have entertained it in fact. So um, they're just saying that they had to prove that Almy had the intent uh, just as the satisfactory, it's one of the, cause, the, one of the pieces of battery is um, intent to harm. They just have to say that, you know, <clears throat> McGuire has to prove that Almy did have that intent. They found that Almy did have the intent in this case, so that's why she got charged with battery. So that's the ruling comes out of this, is that um, if you're a mentally handicapped individual, um, you can still be charged with battery, with assault. Uh, the court is gonna judge you on a, on a fair, somewhat regular playing field. So and it's interesting. I don't think that's probably what we would have expected. So let's go ahead and jump into the ex ante implications that I have. Um, one is that we might have less parents willing to place their children in these types of you know, mental facilities uh, because they're worried that their children might you know, cause some damage. If mentally handicapped individuals oftentimes cause damage. They're not, you know, they can't be expected to act in 100% the same way as a person with regular uh, full mental capacities. Um, so you might have parents worried about putting, you know, potentially Almy's mother would be worried about putting her into this place after this ruling. She probably wouldn't put her back in, in case that, you know, Almy causes more damages. She can't be held liable to pay for more and more damages. So it disincentivizes uh, parents from sending their children to these hospitals, especially if they know that they have violent tendencies. You know, is that the best thing for these people? It's probably not. Um, it, it means that they're not able to get the help and oversight that they need because of the fear 
of having insane amounts of damages lumped upon them after they act out uh, in a way that is somewhat to be expected. Uh, in addition, this does impact you know, the parents of Ami as well, because now the mom, uh, she might have had a fruitful job um, and, and that's how she was able to pay uh, to have this, you know, to have Ami in this you know, mental facility with nurses around her 24 seven. But if she's too nervous to send her back, she might have to quit her job and you know, stay at home and watch over all me. So that's kind of bad for society economically as well, that incentive. Uh, on the good side of it, it does encourage um, more and more people to go into this healthcare uh, type of role because they don't have to have fear that if they get hit or struck by someone like Almi, that they won't be able to recover uh, any damages for it. Um, Furthermore, uh, it might be more tempting uh, for people to like lock these individuals in like a padded room after this type of a ruling just because of the damages that can be caused um, if they act out in one of these rooms with regular furniture and things like that. I don't think that's fair to the mentally handicapped individual to lock them in a padded room for fear of them doing any more damage to themselves. They should be able to live as normal of a life as they can. Um, and finally, is just... Uh, I want to hit on how the court says they will not inquire further into the mental condition of the individual. Um, they're just saying that once intent is satisfied, intent is satisfied. They don't have to look further into the mental condition. Uh, so the, for that, I just like to place like a hypothetical out, which would be, you know, what if someone had drugged uh, another with the Incredible Hulk pill, and the Incredible Hulk pill causes you to be a very violent person for, you know, like a, a term of 30 minutes to an hour. You just kind of act out, you smash things, you go crazy. Um, but that person was unknowingly drugged with the Incredible Hulk pill. And while this person's on the Incredible Hulk pill, you know, they end up hitting someone and uh, that person then brings a suit for battery. Would that, would, uh, do we really not want to inquire further into the mental conditions of an individual, where those arise from, and if they're out of their control? Because if they're out of their control, it doesn't seem fully fair to treat their mental um, faculties that, uh, the same way as someone who's fully in control. Um, and I would just say that, you know, the Incredible Hulk pill could be analogous to someone with a, a mental handicap and that both, both of them are out of their control. They don't have control over, you know, it, what the mental illness does to, to the person and their actions, but just like the person who would be on the Incredible Hulk pill doesn't have as much control as to their actions. So, um, that's an interesting hypothetical that I think might change our mind and make us feel like maybe we ought to have rule, ruled in favor of all me here and not let McGuire recover. So thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye.